Hello everybody, welcome to ChinFat. In this episode, I am going to be showing you how to do a bit of animation. And that animation deals specifically with this uh, effect controls area up here. When you select a clip, in the previous episode I covered how to basically manipulate uh, your position, scale, rotation, anchor point. And in this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to basically animate those features over time. I'm going to move up here. I'm going to grab this little um, border here. I'm going to move it a little bit to the left because this is our animation area. The clip that you have selected down in your timeline is the one that shows up. Um, the clip that you have selected in the timeline will show uh, the attributes for that sp specific clip up here. And this is the duration of the clip from beginning to end of that, that edit right there, from beginning to end of that clip. And as long as you're not zoomed up on this, so you notice this little zoom up right here, if you're not zoomed up on the clip at all, if it's pulled, to, if uh, these things are pulled to the sides here to the extremes and you're looking at the entire clip. So we can change attributes by coming over here and grabbing the scale. I've got that clip selected and I've got the playhead over at the top of it so we can see the changes. I'm going to grab the scale and I'm going to turn, crank the scale down and it turns it down. And we can actually uh, move our position, our horizontal position, and our, as well as our vertical position. Or we can hit our wireframe over here and just simply move it around. So if you want that to change over time, I'm going to hit my little motion tab and hit reset here. Let's do a let's do a little bit of an animation here. What you've got, what you've got on each individual attribute up here is this little stopwatch to the left of it. This is your toggle animation button. When you hit that, we are turning on animation for our position. It's turned blue now, and you've added actually what is called a keyframe right here about one-third of the way through the clip here. And the nature of these keyframes, you can grab them, you can drag them around, you can reposition them, you can select them, you can delete them as well. You select the, uh, If it's blue, it's selected. If it's uh, not blue, then it's uh, not selected. So if we select this, we can hit delete, and it goes away. But since the animation is still turned on, what you've got here is you've got is a way to add and remove keyframes as well. So if we need to add new keyframes, I'm going to move my playhead right to this point and I'm going to hit this little button here and it adds a keyframe. If I grab this and move it down and hit this again, it will add another keyframe. Now what you can do is you can program certain parameters into each one of these keyframes and that will change over time. It interpolates and changes from one to the next here. For example, let's uh, let's move over to this first keyframe. And by the way, don't I would not recommend trying to just eyeball and line on a keyframe. Uh, what you should do is use your arrows left and right here to jump and land on those keyframes because you want to make sure you are manipulating those keyframes exactly. If you get it close and you think that you're manipulating it, you could be actually adding another keyframe, especially if you got a lot longer clip. It's hard to see in this compressed space. So I'm going to arrow to the left and land on this first keyframe. And I'm just going to grab my scale here. I'm not animating my scale, but I'm going to just make my scale a bit smaller here so we can kind of see an animation taking place. And on this keyframe right here, I'm going to grab my position and say, for that keyframe, I want my clip to be right here on that part of the screen. I'm going to arrow over to the next one, and this one already had a, a position added to it here, but I'm going to grab this and drag it more. I'm going to grab my horizontal position and drag it more to the right. Now, within this much time here, it's going to move from here to there on screen. So let's get our mouse back here, get our uh, playhead back here, and I'm going to press play. And there we go. It moved from this position to this position. And these keyframes have very specific, very specific attributes. If you land on them, hit arrow to the left, it shows what those attributes are once you land on them. I'm going to arrow over to the left here, and you can see that the, the horizontal position changes from keyframe to keyframe, and we have an animation. So say we want to change scale. Let's try this as well. Um, actually, I'm going to delete these keyframes right here. And let's keyframe scale. Let's go to the beginning of the clip. Make sure that you're selected inside the effect controls window here, and you can hit home, and it goes to the beginning. I'm going to turn on my keyframing, and it adds the first keyframe. I'm going to move in a little bit, and I'm going to add another keyframe right here. Now I can go to my scale, and I can change my scale. Move that to about 200%. So let's go to the first keyframe, and as I play, it'll go from 100% to 200% as I play. And there's your zoom. Now you can do this in sync with position as well. I'm going to grab this uh, keyframe and drag it over a little bit right there. I'm going to move on position, and I'm going to arrow back to this first keyframe, and I'm going to turn on keyframing for my position. I added that. I'm going to arrow right to my second scale keyframe, and add another keyframe right there. So I, cause when it zoomed up, it kind of brought this guy out of position a little bit, out of the frame a little bit. So now what I can do is on this first frame right here, I like where that's at, I'm just going to have it keep it centered, but as I arrow over to this one here, I'm going to change the vertical position, and maybe a little bit of horizontal, get them kind of in frame a little bit better. And now as it plays from here to here, it's going to zoom, and it will change position and keep him in frame. So it's almost like a tilt that's happening there. As we play it now, 
it zooms up and keeps him in frame. Now as we land on keyframes, if you hit this little button right there, that just removes the keyframe on that parameter. I'm going to undo that. But let's say we don't want that to be so extreme. I'm going to grab my second keyframe scale here and zoom it back out. But now I have to reposition a little bit because now I'm getting a little uh, bottom of the screen there. There we go. Now I arrow over and we have this play in. And there's our little zoom. And let's show you a couple other things you can do here with these keyframes. As it plays through here, it suddenly hits this point and it just immediately starts zooming. And then when it hits this point, it immediately stops and it doesn't look very smooth or natural. Is I'm going to select both these keyframes here. I'm going to right click and we're going to go to the temporal interpolation, time, time interpolation, tell it to ease out of this on both those keyframes. So we'll gradually go into the, the zoom and gradually go into the, into the positioning here. And as we play through that, now watch it starts out and it seems a little bit more smooth. It seems a little bit more natural. I'm going to do the same to these here and I'm going to right click and instead of easing out, I'm going to tell them to ease into this because here it's like easing out of these keyframes and easing into these ones. And so it's a gradual slowdown. Here it goes. It's more of a soft stop there as it zooms in. And any of these items in here can be keyframed in that regard. Let's do rotation here really quick. Bring it to an end right there. And I'm going to grab my rotation here at the end and it's going to rotate 360 two times. So it's going to rotate two times there. So now watch this from this keyframe to this keyframe. It'll rotate twice. It looks kind of dumb, but that's just basically how you keyframe it. If you're doing some slower, if you're doing some slower effects, your uh, rotation might work. But I'm going to grab these, and if you move them to the extreme, it will make them happen uh, over a longer amount of time. Therefore, the rotation is going to be slower. Now notice it's slower as a further part. If you bring them close together, they're, it's going to happen really super fast. You can even keyframe, let me get rid of these here, I'm going to delete those keyframes. You can even uh, keyframe effects. I'm going to go under effects, I'm going to search for a Gaussian blur. I'm going to grab this blur, I'm going to drag and drop it onto a clip. Drag it on that clip, move my playhead over it, and now watch, I've got that, now that effect has been added. Let's say we want to have this shot start out of focus, we want it to come in focus. I'm going to arrow up and get to the beginning of the clip there, and I'm going to add a keyframe, turn on my keyframe for this clip, and I'm going to move it in a second or so, and I'm going to add another keyframe. And at my beginning keyframe, this keyframe is set at zero blurriness, as is this one here, but I landed on that keyframe, and I'm going to change this one to, let's go 100 on the blurriness, and I'm going to repeat edge pixels there. And now as we play through from here to here, it's going to come in focus. So we get to the beginning, play through it, it comes in focus, and it does the zoom, and it looks very natural. Now something that will give you a little bit more control over these keyframes here is uh, we've got the clip selected. Here are the things that I've done with the keyframing. Uh, we can actually increase our track height. I'm going to do Shift Plus, which will increase the track height to a standard track height. Which will actually increase the clip to a standard track height. And down here you'll see this little line. If that line is not there, you can go to your wrench here, click on that, and you can tell it to show video keyframes right there. And right now it is, so this is your little keyframe line right there. Now we can right click on this little effects tab right there and we can tell it what sort of keyframe to show. Right now it's on opacity by default, but I'm going to go to motion and say, show me my position keyframes. And now it brings it up, let's zoom up to this here, and you can see your beginning keyframe on position and your ending keyframe on position. And you have also these little Bezier curves here, which you can have a little bit more, more control over smoothing into these clips. We told it to ease in, but we can grab this and we can drag this to the right and you're going to have a little bit more of an ease in. You can change the angle of this thing, which will make the, that effect more extreme as you play into it here. It's going to do, do a, a bit of a jump on that effect there. But if you want to grab this and drag it over to the right, I'm going to hold down shift and drag it to the right and grab this one, start dragging, hold down shift and drag it to the left to keep it locked on this plane here. Then you're going to have a more gradual position move in there and it doesn't work out with the timing of the of the scale there, but, but that's basically how that works. Let's do a different move here really quick. Let's grab this clip and I'm going to change its position on screen. We're going to do this. We're going to go and scale this down a bit and I'm going to move this right up there. We're going to start there. I'm going to put on turn on my keyframing right there. I'm going to move over in the middle, turn on another keyframe, and I'm just going to, I'm going to move this over right about there, and watch what happens, by the way. If I turn on my wireframe and I grab this and I move it, it creates what's called a spline. You see the spline is showing the animation path from this keyframe to this keyframe now. And it added a keyframe for me since I moved the clip. And I'm going to move it down the timeline here, and I'm going to grab it and move it down here. There we go. And what you get here, speaking of Bezier curves, is you get a little Bezier curve on the edge here, naturally. And you can change the path of this position by 
way, grabbing your Bezier curve and stretching it out. And now you have this move, this little animation move. It moves around that edge there. And it doesn't, it's not linear. It doesn't just go out and then go right down. It doesn't do a zigzag. It's this actual gradual move here. If you hold down Control or Command, you get the little different shape of the triangle here. And what this does is it actually revert, this actually releases uh, the Bezier linkage between these two Bezier curves here. And basically kind of gets rid of, and now it's going to do the straight move here and we'll immediately start heading down here. So let's play through that. And then you can see the difference there as it moves down. I still have a Bezier curve here, or we can make that a little bit more linear just by moving that over. And now it's just going to do a kind of quick zigzag. And that now it does more of a linear move instead of a move on a curve. So those are the basics of how animation works inside of Premiere Pro. The animation does do quite a bit, but in this episode we're just kind of covering the basics of it. Next episode I'll be, I'll be showing this, a little bit of this off by showing you how the Ken Burns effect works.